What is happening guys, Mike here. Welcome back to the channel. Today I got a real treat for you. As the title suggests, today I'm gonna give you a look at the first time I ever got my hair cut by a barber. All right, welcome back once again to a new episode here. Thanks so much for joining me for this one today. Before we jump into it here, I'd like to ask you to take a quick second and subscribe to the channel. I'd really appreciate that. It's a it's a huge help to me and really keeps things running here on my end. So if you wouldn't mind clicking that for me, I'd really appreciate it. But now that we've gotten that out of the way, let's jump right into what we're talking about here today. We are going to be seeing my first encounter with a real barber. When I first actually floated this idea on the channel's social media. I got asked a lot of questions here. So I thought I'd better explain it a little bit before we got into the actual content. The question I got asked the most was, you know, how and why? How have you not had a barber do your hair before? And why, you know, why not? Who cuts your hair now? Things like that. But you guys have seen my stylist Jenny a million times here on the channel. She's actually still who cuts my hair twice a month. She's a cosmetologist though. She's a hairstylist. She's not a barber. And you know, some of you say, well, you know, they're, they're basically the same thing, but, and yes, you know, I guess in, in some ways they are, but where I live, you need specific training to get a barber license. And there are some big differences in that regard. So my stylist does not have that. And when it comes down to it, there's stuff and practices that she does not provide that barbers do like hot towel shaves and beard work and little techniques and things that barbers do in the actual haircut that stylists do not and that she does not do on my haircut, for example. The next question I get a lot is, why don't you just go to a barber? Why don't you just find one in town and, and go to that? And the short answer is, one, I've been working with Jenny for something like seven years now, so I'm kind of, you know, I'm, I'm not just gonna jump, I'm not gonna jump ship on her. I mean, I've been, she's been cutting my hair for a really long time now and, I, now, and I'm really happy with the work that she does. I love her to death. And so unless I have a reason to go find someone new, I, I'm gonna stick with with Jenny but before I found her I spent a good you know two years searching for a barber before I, I found her it's actually how I got connected with her was my search for a barber and at that point here where I live I I went to like at least a dozen places if not more looking for a barber that you know could give me a good haircut and what I found time and time again was they could fade like nobody's business. I mean, they were doing incredible work with the fade, but when it came time to cut the top, they couldn't do it. For some reason, they just couldn't do it. You know, they could make your beard look amazing. Like I said, they could fade, you know, they could give you an excellent looking crew cut or high and tight, but they couldn't cut the top. And that was something that I really wanted because I was getting into different hairstyles at that point. And I couldn't do that because they couldn't give me the cut. You know, that was just, it was extremely odd, but it got me on a path, a path that led me to finding Jenny and things have been really good since then. But that's really the history behind it. That's why I haven't until now actually had my hair cut by an actual barber. But that does bring us to this video. And as you know, I recently got the chance to film a couple videos with Samson's in Michigan. And at this point, this is the third video, the final video that we made while we were there. And I took the opportunity to have Jake, the barber, cut my hair because I really just wanted to see what he would do with it, what he would bring to it, if he would change anything. And it turns out he did. He wanted to update and change it, something that was actually pretty significant here in the back. And you're about to see it. Of course, I had a great time. It was really enlightening for me to see. And so I, I think I better stop talking about it at this point. I, I'm really excited to just show you guys the content. So let's send it on over to Jake at the barbershop and get rolling on this haircut. Hey guys, it's Adam from Samson's here. I'm going to be narrating because I'm an amateur barber as well. So I cut Jake's hair sometimes. This is Jake. He's the guy performing Mike's haircut. Jake's been a barber for about five years now, has a great reputation. He's been my barber for four years. So I trust him tremendously. First things first, he's just finding out how Mike's hair lays naturally. Jake and Mike had never met in person before this, so he needed to get a feeling for Mike's hair, how it lays, uh, what his natural parts are. So he did that and then started with some scissor over comb work. 
Mike had been going to a stylist for a long time, but hadn't been to a barber since he was in the military. So here he is, sectioning off his hair, getting all the long hair on top out of the way. Now Jake is doing kind of the heavy lifting here, going through, cleaning it up, cutting his hair really short. Mike gave Jake a good blank canvas by not having his hair cut for several weeks before coming. So Jake is going to town cleaning that up. He's getting rid of all the big brush pretty much to be able to start his precision work as a fader. Jake is cutting up against the grain to get the hair to stand up straight. The reason he does this is because he can be more exact that way and get a closer cut. With a fade, millimeters make all the difference. So Jake wants to go against the grain to keep it going very, very tight. Now you see him starting to set his fade line. Basically, Jake sets a guideline all the way around Mike's head and then blends in from there. When he's cutting with the side of his clippers like that, that's called etch fading. It's very useful for when doing high precision detailed work. You also see Jake use a brush a lot while he's cutting hair. Jake is using that brush to remove already cut hair from Mike's scalp. Basically, just because the hair is cut doesn't mean that it falls away. And so Jake is still seeing the hair there, although it may not need to be cut. So when he brushes it away, it gives him a better view of the canvas with which he is working. When you see the clipper not leaving the skin like this, he is rock fading. Basically, he's using the clipper as a fulcrum or anchor and working it that way. When Jake cuts hair, you'll usually see him use three or four separate clippers to do his job. Each one is just a little bit different from the other and has different steps along the way for how close the clippers can get. Now you see Jake cutting down. When you get to longer hair, the weight of the hair is gonna hold itself down. And so Jake is cutting with the grain to stay with how the hair is going to lie. This will allow the haircut, the haircut to grow out better, um, but also lie more easily immediately following the haircut. Jake always follows up with some precision scissor, scissor work to get any stragglers left behind. Mike doesn't want his hair to stick straight out the back like a shelf, so Jake has to be precise and meticulous in this part. Jake's experience plays a large role because he knows how much weight will help keep a cow lick down. Obviously, Mike knows what products to use, but Jake's gonna give him a good canvas to work with. Now you can see Mike's hair is better faded. Jake actually went all the way to skin on this one. Now he's shaping up around Mike's ears, neckline, and hairline. This gives it a real clean, finished look. His shapers are a different set of clippers specifically for this. When he does design work, that's what he uses for it. Now he's gonna frame Mike's face. Basically, everybody wants that 90 degree turn around their forehead, but very few people are born with that genetically. Now Jake goes to scissor over comb on top. Mike gave us a good canvas for this. It looks wonderful, but you see him section it because your head isn't completely flat. And lastly, he's doing some shaping along the beard. The best tip for beards is to use the jawline you're given naturally, and then the beard can enhance that. Now Jake is foil fading Mike's hair. The cool thing about a foil is it works almost like a piece of sandpaper and can get even smoother than the flat blade. Jake can also pull his skin tight to get deeper in the grooves and to his follicles to get deeper to do a closer haircut. Now Jake's starting to style Mike's hair. Mike takes it very seriously, uses a blow dryer every day. Jake wouldn't do this with every, custom, every client or customer, but he knows Mike 
takes his hair seriously and will style it the same way to get the best results day in and day out. Lastly, Jake does a little bit more touch up on the swirl in the back of Mike's head. But here you see the payoff. That attention to detail, Mike has a great part. Now Jake is using a super secret Samson's product that is not yet out. This is our texture powder and hopefully Mike will be able to tell you more about that soon. Jake is using this as a pre-style styler so Mike's hair isn't completely dry yet. It's still a little bit damp. Jake's putting it in there to get volume and a little bit of control and a lot of texture. Now he's going to finish it off as always with the Samson's original pomade. Cool thing when the pomade is used with the texture powder it takes away any natural shine you would have seen before. Mike's got good thick hair so it is helpful to use a stronger product like that. Now Jake is styling it with a comb. He and I both love comb lines. We love the look of them. And we knew Mike could handle it and use it appropriately. Even up close, you can see that precision Jake puts into every haircut. Now he's coaching Mike through what he did differently and how to style it appropriately. Doesn't matter how great Jake's work is if it doesn't work for Mike. So here you see him before with his, it's been about three or four weeks since his last haircut, wearing a hat all day. Gave Jake a good blank canvas to work with. And here he is after. Very similar hairstyle, but with the skin fade and Jake's fading talents, was really able to change up this look with just making little adjustments where his skill and experience make all the difference. All right. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. I, of course, sure did. It was very interesting to see someone else add in their knowledge and expertise to my cut that really hasn't been changed in a long while before he, you know, changed up, especially the back there. He kind of really changed up the way it laid in the back and, and offered me that tip to make it lay a lot better. And it really changed the shape overall back there. And I thought it was a really good tip. It actually styles a lot easier, too. So that was really cool to see. I can't thank Jake enough for taking the time with me and, and educating me a little bit and making this video with me. I had a great time and he's an awesome barber. If you're in the area, I can't recommend him enough. And if you would like to check out the product he used to style my hair there, it's the Samson's pomade. We've talked about it a lot in the past and at this point we've even seen how it gets made. So I will leave a link down below for you if you're interested in checking it out. Let me know also what you thought about the haircut here in the comment section down there. I'm interested in reading your guys' thoughts too and while you're doing that, make sure you tap that like button for me and subscribe if you haven't already. Again, that's a big help to me and I thank you so much for doing that in advance. As we speak though, as we speak right now, I am in Texas filming an episode of Behind the Brew with Flagship. So keep an eye out on that on my Instagram accounts for updates and we'll be posting stories and things like that. Notifications on the upcoming episodes should pop up if you got your bell icon turned on. The upcoming episodes really should be awesome. I'm super excited to share them with you guys and I think it's going to be an awesome trip with some really cool content. So that will be coming very soon. Take it easy. I'll see you next time.